Good morning, folks. Minor solar storms continue at Earth and things get a bit more active in the solar atmosphere. We'll have interesting news, features, and articles today, but we begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We're going to find the last 24 hours on our star were not exactly scary, but not exactly calm either. Menacing coronal holes and activity top left. The activity was kicked off by a snap of the incoming umbral fields, and then a plasma filament, which is visible here, breaking away and down. We'll come back to 193 angstrom so you can see the action caused by that over on the left side one more time. We didn't have any solar flares or earth-directed eruptions, and the sunspot we see is not only small, but the umbra are all negative, red. The positive blue patch is a plague trailing the region. But as you look to the limb, we see stronger magnetism cresting into view right underneath where those incoming umbral magnetic fields could be found, and they likely have sunspots at the surface as well. The fields are large, they are numerous, they are active, and they snapped at least once overnight, which contributed to the action across this area. Solar wind here at Earth, those are some serious spikes in speed. Didn't last too long, but they didn't have to. They triggered another geomagnetic storm at the onset, and we could see reverberation storms continue today even without more intense streams in the wind. Of course, the streams are coming from these coronal holes, and indeed the interplanetary magnetic fields of the second southern opening is getting its grip on Earth firmly now, set to face us squarely the next 48 hours. Let's go to the top news. This is a photo of the rift eruption in Lava Lake in Africa from back in January. What's special about it is humans had no say in the data collection. Another spacecraft noticed what could be a volcanic eruption and the artificial intelligence of this craft picked it up and planned to go get a photo all on its own. Whoa. Moving on to Ceres where they have determined the axial precession based on where the ice sits in the craters. Oddly, they calculate its precession at 24,500 years which at that length of time is only negligibly off from Earth's precession, just about 26,000 years. Let's do some basic weather learning with earth.nullschool.net from a wind overlay to pressure where the strong low earth spots are purple or red if extra powerful, all spinning likewise per hemisphere, counterclockwise on the north, clockwise on the south when looking from above here. I think we'll have to come back to Australia for those storms in a moment, but let's come back north again and hopefully you will notice how the wind flow into the lows draws water vapor away from the tropical moisture bank as it accelerates and compresses and joins wind flows from other directions the clouds are created from that moisture wrapping around and into the low and last but not least the storms and precipitation from the wind to the tropics transformed into rainfall top weather alerts in our top viewer locations the low entering the central states tonight will have an opportunity to drop major severe weather in texas and oklahoma will be scary for the rest of the week as it moves east and don't forget California still under threat from the previously mentioned storms hitting the coast. Across the pond it's the low in the southwest and it has major flood potential where it brings Mediterranean moisture on shore mostly in France. As I said we're back to the Aussies yeah storms battering east and west pretty much all day I would check your local forecasts. We've got more of your pressure and radar forecasts across the globe a peek in at the Blood Echo wind map from QuakeWatch.net and shots of our star to close. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.